This Week at NASA. Outside the International Space Station, Expedition 35 flight engineers Chris Cassidy and Tom Marsburn of NASA conducted a five-hour, 30-minute spacewalk on the station's P-6 truss to replace a suspect pump controller box, which distributes coolant to the station's thermal control system. The quick turnaround spacewalk was mounted just 48 hours after an ammonia coolant leak developed on P-6. After installing the spare pump, power was turned on and the system appeared to be working properly with no indications of ammonia leaking from the pump. It's going to take some time. It'll take some weeks for us to look at the system, evaluate the system and, and make sure we, we did indeed uh, stop the leak. With the crew that we had, uh, they had actually been out to this work site together uh, on a previous shuttle mission, so a lot of things worked in our favor to be able to pull this uh, spacewalk together. The spacewalk was the fourth for both Cassidy and Marshburn and the 168th spacewalk in support of station assembly and maintenance. Marshburn will return to Earth Monday night, U.S. time, with Expedition 35 Commander Chris Hadfield and cosmonaut Roman Romanenko in their Soyuz spacecraft. NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden delivered opening remarks at the Humans to Mars Summit at George Washington University. The three-day event held by Explore Mars and GW's Space Policy Institute provided a forum for NASA and the space community to discuss technical, scientific, and policy-related challenges associated with sending humans to Mars by the 2030s. There are technological gaps to sending humans to an asteroid and to Mars, and so every single moment of our time and every single dollar of our assets must be dedicated to developing those technologies that allow us to go beyond low Earth orbit. Also discussed, the planned NASA initiative to send humans to an asteroid and the importance of work by astronauts during long-duration missions aboard the International Space Station. While not specifically designed to send humans to Mars, these endeavors will provide invaluable experience useful in planning and completing a successful human journey to the Red Planet. Also, we need to think about what we carry in terms of medical equipment for the crew, other things along those lines, so we get a chance to experience a different risk environment where we, we have a, you know, a protracted return capability back to the Earth, and, and I think that's what we're going to have to do as we go to Mars. Skylab, the nation's first space station, launched aboard a Saturn V rocket 40 years ago on May 14, 1973. The three crews that completed missions aboard the experimental facility not only set successive new records for long-duration spaceflight, but also completed about 300 experiments covering physical and biomedical science and Earth and space applications. The Skylab program also yielded knowledge that was eventually used in development of the International Space Station, just as the work being performed on the ISS now is helping NASA develop new missions that will extend our reach farther into the solar system. As humans move outward into deeper space exploration, we'll probably learn things that we weren't expecting to learn just as we did in Skylab uh, in ISS, and uh, the next things we do will be uh, just as astounding as the step from Skylab to ISS is. After the final crew left Skylab in February 1974, the empty spacecraft circled the Earth until it deorbited in July 1979. Uh, and During a NASA TV in-flight event on May 7th, Expedition 35 flight engineer Tom Marshburn of NASA discussed the work being done on the International Space Station with members of the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation Subcommittee on Science and Space. Chaired by Florida Senator Bill Nelson, the subcommittee conducts oversight of NASA and several other science and technology related agencies. Can you explain uh, how, you know, U.S. private space companies uh, are using the ISS as a technology platform? If they can do it, that is uh, an incredibly impressive technology demonstration. Going into space is not easy. They're coming up with great efficiencies, great new technologies built on what NASA's already done so that they can get probably cheaper, better, faster, get things up to the space station. The scheduled May 14th return to Earth of Marshburn and Expedition 35 crewmates Chris Hadfield of the Canadian Space Agency and Roman Romanenko of the Russian Federal Space Agency marks the completion of their five-month mission aboard the station. 
Meanwhile, the next crew headed to the space station, Expedition 3637 Soyuz Commander Fyodor Yurchikin of the Russian Federal Space Agency, NASA Flight Engineer Karen Nyberg, and Flight Engineer Luca Parmitano of the European Space Agency fielded questions from the news media as part of their pre-launch activities at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia. The crew is scheduled to travel to the Kazakhstan launch site May 16th to complete training in advance of its launch to the station on May 29th local time. After being incommunicado with the ground during the recent solar conjunction, the Mars Curiosity rover is preparing to get back to wheeling around the red planet. And thanks to a software update, the rover now has the ability to navigate more on its own. The new Autonomous Navigation Capability, or AutoNav, enables the rover to evaluate and select safe paths of travel with less input from the rover team on the ground. Curiosity also received a software update to prevent the sensitive telescopic eye of the ChemCam instrument from being burned by the sun. The update is designed to make sure ChemCam's eye is never pointed directly at the sun. And the rover team is also confirming the calibration of Curiosity's navigation cameras before driving to a new location. Plans are in the works for a short drive to a new drill site called Cumberland, about nine feet west of where Curiosity's drill first touched Martian stone in February. A new Google Earth engine time-lapse made from Landsat satellite imagery captures the rapid growth from 1984 to 2012 of Las Vegas, Nevada the fastest growing city in the U.S. over the past two decades. Each frame of the time lapse is constructed from a year of Landsat data and equates to about a 1.7 terapixel snapshot. Jointly managed by NASA and the U.S. Geological Survey, the Landsat program has acquired images of the Earth's surface since 1972, providing critical scientific information about our changing planet. The time lapse is located at HTTP earthengine.google.org slash hashtag intro slash Las Vegas. These bugs, flightless fruit flies, may someday help make airplanes more fuel efficient. Their work starts in a wind tunnel at NASA's Langley Research Center, where technicians install the edge of a wing that's covered with a special coating. The task is to design a surface that prevents insect residues from sticking. Okay? And the reason is um, that if you have any residue sticking, it trips the airflow over it. Rough airflow increases airplane fuel usage as much as 30%, says NASA's Environmentally Responsible Aviation Project. Between the commercial coatings we've looked at and new coatings or, and surfaces that we've engineered and modified, we've looked at about 60 different uh, surfaces. For the bugs, it's up close. They're launched at the coated wing at about 150 miles an hour. The researcher's goal? To narrow the field of coatings to a few that are effective enough to test on an airplane in flight. Two, one, start. It was ready, set, soar at the 2012-2013 NASA Student Launch Project Challenge. More than 600 students launched rockets of their own design, complete with working science or engineering payloads at the event, sponsored by Marshall Space Flight Center. The goal was to see which rocket could come closest to the one mile mark and safely return its payload to Earth. Of the 54 teams that participated, 10 received preliminary awards. The grand prize of $5,000 from ATK Aerospace Group will be awarded May 17th after final post-flight analysis and reviews are complete. Three, two, one. Roger, have a lift off and the clock is operating. On May 15th, 1963, Mercury Atlas 9, the final manned space mission of the U.S. Mercury program, launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Oh, Roger, you're looking beautiful. On board the spacecraft, named Faith 7, was astronaut Gordon Cooper. Despite technical problems near the end of the flight, Cooper and Faith 7 completed 22 orbits of Earth and splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, or to follow us on Ustream, Flickr, and other social media, log on to www.nasa.gov.